Now that we have the stress tensor, I'd like to talk about the strain tensor. And the first strain tensor I want to talk about is the one in which, um, as you'll find out later, we're not compensating for rotation. We're just going to talk about displacements and strain straight from there. Later we'll find out that EIJ, like written here, um, has rotations in it. And we're going to want to take those rotations out so we can just look only at the true uh, strain inside the material without a rotation affecting uh, the EIJ matrix. So the classic way in which we uh, start to develop strain tensor is we have our one dimensional system which makes everybody comfortable at the beginning. And let's call this the X direction and we, we pull in this um, x direction. So what will happen is that this rod will stretch, let's say, and let's assume that there's no uh, initial deformation. And we had a point there that was originally there, but now that point has shifted so if we call this point, you know, P, this has become P prime under the polling. And there's another point here we'll call Q. And Q has been pulled. I mean, this is probably not the scale. I should probably draw this further up. But anyway, this is Q prime, right? So what's happening here is... that as we pull X, we have some displacement U. And if I were to, you know, look at U as a function of X, the amount of displacement grows as I get further and further from, if we call this zero, I get further and further, but it grows at the same rate. So essentially we have a relationship to displacement with respect to X is like that. And so we end up with, of course, a extra segment here uh, at the end, let's call it delta u, right? So uh, if we were to write this equation out and we wanted to look at the differential change, not the absolute, so we say pq minus pq, right? That is going to be delta x and what we've done here is that we have um, you know essentially defined e as a slope of that line. And of course, I think you can see that if I look for the differential component of PQ and then uh, P prime uh, Q, right? You'll end up with essentially E, which is, of course, delta U over delta X. So essentially, uh, the relative uh, displacement of a previous segment under the stress is now changed, but instead of looking at the absolute quantities, the differential change is E, which uh, we're defining here as, as the strain. So um, I can look at then displacement in a general body
in a general direction. as the following, assuming that each displacement can affect another one. So just because I have strain in another direction doesn't mean it can't contribute to, again, the general tensor idea that these kinds of du dx's in the other directions can affect, um, of course, the, to the displacement, right? So, you know, as usual, we end up with an expression And um, we're going to define then, as we've already done, this is going to be E I J, which is going to be our our uh, our initial uh, strain matrix. So just to draw that in a different color. So the displacement at some point U it's not working for me right now for some reason. So UI is going to equal E it's an E I J. So UI equals EIJ XJ. And so that uh, defines the uh, strain tensor uh, EIJ. In the next lecture, uh, we need to think about, all right, that's fine. But if I take a body here, it's a very simple uniaxial case. And I've generalized it here because of our experience with tensors now that we could have um, displacements in other directions, uh, sorry, um, uh, X's, you know, different points in other directions combined with their strain can cause distortions and uh, U displacements in, in different directions. So we've just made a general tensor, but that means it's going to include, include everything. And we want to go back and think about, just like we do with stress, we don't want a rigid body to be rotating and to have that included in our our stress tensor because we're interested in what the direct application to the material itself is if it's immobile. And so we want to do the same thing here and that's what we'll do in the next lecture.